Hi, I'm Tom. Now you might be wondering why I'm sitting here in near darkness. Well, in this video, I'm gonna take you through the setup of the smart LED lights in my kitchen extension. So I had my kitchen extension finished earlier this year. And one of the things on my to-do list has been to finish setting up all the smart bulbs that I had installed in the track lighting uh, in the ceiling. So one of the features of the extension is it has an asymmetric vaulted ceiling. And one of the things that I quite liked was, or one of the things that I wanted to do was to install track lights. So this was kind of a perfect opportunity, I guess, as part of the, the building work. So I had some very, very nice uh, track lights installed. Uh, there's four tracks in total, three of which you can see on the, the screen and one of them is just um, over there on the opposite side but I couldn't get the I couldn't get in with the angle of the, the camera which is here on the, the island beside me. Now installed in each of these down lights is an inner uh, basically Zigbee bulb. So they are essentially dimmable and color changeable. And I've also had them connected up so the entire track light setup is connected to a, a Shelly Pro 4. Now I've done a video on the, the Shelly Pro 4 which I'll, I'll link to in the description but that just shows how all the lighting I had done in the extension uh, all comes back to a single uh, little consumer unit or a little unit in one of the cupboards. So all the lighting from the down lights, the track lights, the outside lights, everything is basically controlled by two Shelly Pro 4s. But what I haven't done yet was actually connect all the bulbs uh, to Home Assistant and set it up so that I can control them individually and then also to finish setting up the detached mode uh, so that I can have them on and, and manage them. Now I've recently did a video on the Shelly detached mode which I will link to in the description and that explains how I can basically use the, the smart bulbs in conjunction with the existing light switch which is on the wall behind me. Alright so to get started the first thing we need to do is to add all the light bulbs into Home Assistant. Now, I've just remembered that actually that one of the bulbs installed is a Philips Hue bulb, which I, I think I was trying out, um, but the rest of them are inner bulbs. So when I turn them on, as they haven't been paired before, they should briefly flash, and then I should be able to find them using the Zigbee integration in Home Assistant. So I'll turn them on now, and they have indeed flashed, so we'll jump over to settings, we'll click add and we'll click Zigbee. And what should happen now is the eight bulbs should all appear. Okay, that's six. Well, something's happening. I can see their brightness has changed. Seven. Come on, lucky number eight. Wow, now I found nine. <laughs> Um, can't tell you what the ninth device is, but we'll let this finish. This can take quite. This can take a few minutes. I, that took a couple of goes. So basically, turning the lights on, it would discover two or three of the bulbs and add them in successfully. And then, um, yeah, did that a couple of times, and it's now on the last one. 
So this one actually was the, the Philips Hue bulb. So I've actually taken that out and popped an inner back in just so that all of the all eight of them are exactly the same. So with any luck, this will finish uh, interviewing and be set up. And then we should have all eight bulbs added in. But that's it added now. So if I go into my Zigbee devices, I should have eight. Mm, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's all of the bulbs added into Home Assistant now. And I'm just going to number these or rename them and I'll number them basically one to eight just in kind of an order over my head so we know which is which and I'll go ahead and do that now as I don't know the order that these lights were added in the kind of process is just to turn them off and on and see which one actually changes and then I'm just giving them as I said a simple numbering sequence so this one uh, is the eighth, it's actually the seventh one. So I'll rename that one like that. And I just use my standard convention of room kind of section and then the number. So I'll click update on that. And uh, actually we'll go back. And is this the same one? Yeah. And I'll just rename this itself and I'll just call it Kitchen Track 7. And I'll say no as I've named it. So let's filter this down to make this easier to find. So I'll walk through. So we'll just start from the top. So all the lights are now renamed from one to eight. So similar to what I did in my other video, I'm going to switch the Shelly over to this detached mode. So let's first of all find the Shelly. Why is my, okay. So we'll jump into the Shelly. So I should have two Shelly Pro 4s. I'm not sure which one is which. Yeah, so that's it. So we have the track lighting there. Uh, and we already have the input. I think we've got switch zero input. So we'll need to add, I think this is probably switch one. Although, let's just check. Um, let me bring up the entities. So the inputs are normally not, not added in. So I will, I'll enable them all. And then that will help me identify which one is which. So it always takes a little bit of time for these entities to become enabled but I've got one up here already which is something that's turned off so that that, that might be the outside lights I haven't um, I renamed each of the switches so to the lard or the track lights the the deck lights outside um, but I didn't actually rename the corresponding inputs so let me refresh this Okay, so we have one here. So all of these are uh, clear, that input's clear and the, the new ones have added. So this must be the, this must be our one now, which is turned on. So I can just check that. But I need to use a physical light switch. <coughs> Okay, so it's actually input zero. Let me just turn these lights back on. So this is our track lighting input. So I'm gonna rename this to be kitchen. 
We'll call it, we'll just call it kitchen track input. And I'll update that and we'll actually rename it as well and we'll just call it kitchen track input and I'll spell kitchen correctly. Right. All right, so that's our input now. So what we'll do now is we can jump over to node red and I'll set up uh, tracking for this. So I've, in my node red, I have all my switches um, and lighting automations in one place. So I'm just going to create another one. I'll just do it down at the bottom here. So what we want is a state. Uh, I think it's this one. I know where the icon. So we'll double click. And the entity we want is the track input. And then what we want to do is when that's set to true, we want to call. So what I do is I use a switch. Um, actually, we don't need to use a switch, do we? Because we just want to toggle. So we're going to call a service. And what we'll do is we'll link these together. So what the service will do is it's going to be a lighting service. And what we want to do is just call toggle. Now we've got our various entities. So we've got our track light one. We've got track two. Track three. I think you get the idea. And then track four. Six, six, seven, I've got that six, we've got seven. And kitchen track eight. Where is kitchen track eight? Or oh, track eight. And I'll click done. Link those together. And we'll deploy that. And what that should mean now is that when the input is changed, the lights will turn off. So I'll just toggle the light switch. Oh, uh, 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 I forgot. We haven't switched the, the Shelly over to the Tatch. So it's actually happened there is the lights have all turned off because the relay itself is turned off. So we're going to visit the, the Shelly's uh, page itself. And I think, I think we said we were is it this one? Yeah, so that's the track lights. So what we want to do in here is try to change the button type or the switch type. So here we have, this is slightly different to what I covered in my previous video because the, the UI for the, the Pro models is a bit different, but this is the detached switch. So we will click Save and Interestingly, this has actually thrown an API error. Uh, just toggle. Okay, that's okay. Let's leave that for now. So if I now toggle the switch, we should see the node red sensor change. And all but two of the lights have actually turned off. So there's something wrong with the... Uh, there's something wrong with the track with the setup. That's okay. Try that again. Okay, so I think I know what's happening is that it, as you can see sort of the three behind me. Oh, oh, it's got a bit weird. A couple more of turn -offs. So they've toggled 
but they're kind of in a weird state. So what I will do, I'll jump back into Home Assistant. My Home Assistant is acting very slow. And this is where, okay, we'll just go to Settings. The wife has tried to sneak past. And I will go into my Zigbee. And let me find my track lights. So just make sure that all the track lights are turned on. Yeah. So what I'm going to do, so I've got three that are on behind me. So I'm just going to turn them off. One. Getting progressively darker. Two. And three. So that's all the track lights off now. So now I will try the light switch again. Yeah, only... Oh no, they actually they've all come on. Okay, so they've all come on, which is great. So that's... Uh, that's basically the setup um, finished now for those. So that kind of wraps up uh, this video. So I've kind of taken you through how I've configured the, the inner bulbs. I've taken you through how I've set up the detached state in the Shelly. And then I've shown you how to uh, create an automation using Node-RED to toggle the state of those bulbs. Um, you can do all this through Home Assistant, but for me, all my automations are done through Node-RED, so I've kind of stuck with that. But there's nothing to stop you doing exactly the same thing and just using a Home Assistant automation. Essentially, you're just calling the toggle service. Now, there's a couple of things that this kind of process enables, or now that I've got essentially individual control over the bulbs, I hope to be able to do some, some different things like uh, using the presence sensor to turn on one of the lights, for example, as you walk into the kitchen very early in the morning or in the middle of the night, it'll be able to turn on one of the lights. I've also got an idea to use some capacitive uh, touch sensors uh, and position them around the kitchen kind of discreetly, uh, mainly mounted under the worktop, so that you'll be able to sort of feel around and tap a little button and then maybe just light the particular area. So if you're still at the sink or you're still at the hob and as it kind of comes from daylight to dusk to dark, you, instead of having to walk over and, and you know, come to the, the door of the kitchen and turn, the, or turn all the lights on, you might quickly be able to toggle one light that just for the area that you're working in. That was always my intention with the track lighting um, it kind of gives you that flexibility to just light particular areas. Um, it's really, really nice. Um, but now that I've got all these bulbs set up, I'll hopefully be able to start enabling some of those scenarios. If you have any questions uh, or you want to know a little bit more, please use the comments. I'm happy to kind of share my experience of this or answer any questions you might have. If you've enjoyed this video, please do like and subscribe. Um, and that's it. I'm Tom and thanks for watching.